Are you ready to be in the spotlight? Are you ready to share your story with the world? Well, Snails with No Shells is where you need to be. Available on all digital platforms, Facebook, and YouTube. Snails with No Shells. Leave that shell at the door. Where did we go wrong? Greetings, beautiful ones. I am Miss BJ Martin, and this is Snails with No Shells. Leave that shell at the door. That's the only rule that I have here in this room. All right. So, without further ado, I'd like to bring my next amazing guest to the stage, Liz Dulevant. Yeah. <laughs> and the crowd goes wild. <laughs> How you doing? I am amazing. How are you? I'm well. Awesome. Yes, I need to get some drum machines. It's up here, here. Give me some sound effects going on over here. <laughs> Thank you for joining me on Snails with No Shells. My pleasure. All right. So let's go. Let's read a little bit of your bio. Okay. Let's get to know a little bit more about uh, Lynn. Okay. Lynn has a master's in psychology. Well, first of all, psychology. Lynn is a psychologist and life coach relationship expert. And you, as you all know, this is Mental Health Month. This month is Mental Health Month, and that is why Lynn um, was chosen and and accepted, you know, to be on the show because it's such a very, it's very and a very important month to me as it should be to everyone. I feel, <laughs> you know. So here we go. So he's a psychologist and life coach relationship expert. He has a master's in psychology from NC Central University and completed 140 hours of doctoral training in marriage and family therapy at Virginia Tech. Um, he's conducted several workshops and conferences on relationships and held panel discussions on marriages and divorce. Uh, it goes it goes on and on. I mean, he's he's a, He's just letting you know he's an expert. He has over 10 years of experience, has several publications. Uh, oh, my gosh. I can go on and on and on, but we won't. What I'm going to do, ladies and gentlemen, is I'm going to post this information <laughs> in the information section. You can read the rest yourselves, but he's qualified. He is overqualified in actuality. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you again. Thank you. Sure okay, so Lynn, where were you born and raised? Born in New York. Okay. Raised half of my life in Newark, New Jersey. And then I did, like most Northerners, I came south when I was about 15. Okay. And I've been here ever since. Um, I consider myself a Southerner. Don't let the accent fool you. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm very much a Southerner and went to school here, stayed here. and. Uh, this is where I call home. I'm currently in Durham, North Carolina. Okay. All right. Okay. So what was okay? So what was it like growing up? And okay, you you lived a couple of places, New York and then New Jersey. So let what was it like growing up in New Jersey? Tricky. Uh, mm. I, I'm I'm older, so uh, it I don't know. It 
a little more carefree. Um, uh, when when I was a kid, we had to go outside to play. We didn't have Atari and Pong and all those other video games. We had to get outside to play. And I was talking to some friends of mine. I said, we're the last generation that had to go outside to play. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. We are. I'm a part of that generation. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it's, it's real different now. Mm -hmm. Wow. I, I don't even recognize it. These kids all stay inside and they're, you know, they're, they're not as physically fit as, you know, when I looked at me at their age, it was mm -hmm. just way different. So, but, you know, times are changing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I was like, to be, to be in the house, that was punishment. No. You'd be like, Mama, can I please go outside? Can I please? I said, where my mama down? Can I please go outside? Can I please go outside? She used to be like, get out. <laughs> to be in the house was terrible, right? It was. It was horrible. And it was a fate worse than death. So all my friends outside are looking out my window. But yeah, no, nah, that's not good. No. <laughs> so you say it was a little, it was a little, what you say? It was like kind of rough growing up? Well, you, you, you know, city life versus country life. So it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's more fast paced. It's, it's, it's way more options in the city. And and I wanted a slower pace. And I remember time, well, you know, I was uh, ninth, I finished ninth grade there in, in Jersey. And for 10th grade on, I came south and it was, it was the best thing I could have done. Mm -hmm. Love it. I love the south. Did you have family? there mm -hmm. yeah yeah most of my family migrated north and south so i got mm -hmm. cousins in dc and new york and uh, mm -hmm. we all uh we we go north and south so family reunions are here sometimes we go there mm -hmm. that's good. awesome i'm I, I love that you said uh family reunions i have not been to a family reunion in years and you guys still do that yeah what's the sale that's awesome. Yes, people, uh, melanated people, we do still have reunions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, because, yeah, because you know, all the stuff you see out there, you know, you don't you don't see a whole lot of positive light on us and on us. On this show, I'm like, I'm showing you, we here, we exist, you know, we are here doing some, we change helping <laughs> change the lives. We still doing these things, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's awesome. So my next question, what did you want to be when you grew up? I didn't know until my sophomore year in school mm -hmm. and I took a psychology class and I was fascinated with it. I'm like, wow, this is really cool because it kind of explains some of the, the family dysfunction that I came from and, mm -hmm. and, and gave it some context as to why it happened and what you can do about it to correct it. And I'm like, well, you know, I did all this stuff for myself. Maybe I can help somebody else who is in a similar situation. So yeah, it was pretty cool. Okay. So you okay, you gravitated to that in uh in high school. Okay. Oh no, this is college. This is fresh sophomore year of in college. college. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So um can you talk about maybe touch just lightly? You don't have to go deep, but maybe lightly on some of the dysfunction. <laughs> that you recognize that you had in your family? Oh, yeah. Uh, both my parents were alcoholics. So, oh. and, and I was an only kid. So, you know, if if you're an only kid and both your parents are alcoholics, you go into survival mode. And survival mode can stay in the on position if you don't reach down in there and turn it off. So one of the things learning about, you know, taking coursework and and doing all the work in psychology, it helped me to learn how to turn my that that survival mechanism off because it was firing for no reason. There was no reason to survive in school, so just had to reach in there and turn it off. Mm. Wow, that's deep. That's deep. I've, I've heard a lot of uh, you know stories. Everybody that's been on my show. We've all been through something. And it's like everyone is, is here that has been on my platform is here to help. You know, they're here. They're here helping. For the most part, I've had people that wanted to be teachers. And um, I had an astronaut, somebody who wanted to be an astronaut. I thought that was pretty interesting. Yeah. But um, and she does um, specializes in diabetes, you know, helping you get your diabetes. Mm -hmm. 
levels down. Um, wow. Well, thank you for sharing that. That that has been an, an experience. Oh my God, both of your parents. Usually, at least one parent, you know, is a uh, functioning or functional or something. But uh, both. <laughs> dang. Yeah. So you, you have. You know, I don't drink or smoke. So I know you don't. I know you don't. <laughs> and you know what? And 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 I, we were talking about that. Like when people deal with their um, you know, their traumas, like they either go, they either go to the aspect of they are they you could have been an alcoholic too. You know what I'm saying? They either oh, sure. go towards alcohol or they go completely away from it. People, you know how people handle their traumas different kind of ways. We were just having that discussion. Wow. Yeah. So, you know, the, the technical term is genetic predisposition. I would imagine that if I started drinking, be like the fish taking the water. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, but I, I don't, you don't have to subscribe to the genetic predisposition. You, you can, you can do something else. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm living proof of that. So, yes. I love it. Genetic pre disposition. Genetic pre disposition. I learn something every day. <laughs> I love it. Genetic pre -dis disposition. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Wow. Wow. That's deep. That's yeah. My, both, if both my parents were alcoholics. So in my gene pool, there may be a little recessive thing on one of my genes that says, hey, I can drink. And, mm -hmm. and I, I remember my of course in college, it was kind of crazy. I, I had my first beer in college, threw it up, said, nope, I'm good to go. Mm -hmm. And that's what it says. And then, mm -hmm. you know, I, as you get older, you graduate and you go to black and white affairs and, you know, and I, I think I had wine. I, I, I could do like maybe a little, uh, what are those little goblets called? Anyway, uh, I, I could do one of those and, and I would be, you know, high i'm ready to go to sleep after one one thing of wine so mm -hmm. yeah but i, I ne just never latched on because i didn't like that feeling of being out of control okay that never worked for me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. wow what an interesting story wow wow well again thank you for sharing that you just you just you just never know people you know i you know they say you see my glory you don't know my story you never know what people have been through you know and why they why they do the things that they do so mm -hmm. yeah so you're you're a life coach relationship expert and a psychologist oh mm -hmm. uh, is that three different three different things or it's it's a it's all on a continuum so it's okay. it's, it's just a not really uh, it's it's all combined but you know people like going to a coach you know that the word therapist which i avoid using is uh it has a negative connotation you know oh really? you got to be a therapist oh, oh i ain't seeing no therapist because you know but I, I might go see a coach oh wow I a relationship coach i, I don't want to go to a therapist but i'll go to a coach yeah wow really Still today in 2022. Don't matter. Mm. Don't matter. If you look at a lot of TV, you 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 see therapists and crazy white people, and you associate the two. And you're like, well, I ain't, and that ain't my problem. So I don't want to, you know, I don't want to see that. Right. So more of us are coming through. More and more uh, African Americans are are being coaches and therapists and counselors. So mm -hmm. we're we're actually starting to move into that space where you can find somebody, you know, who who can match you culturally, mm -hmm. language. Yes. Yeah. That is so important. Oh yeah, you. That is so important, absolutely. Because I went to a, a therapist, and we were not of the same, you know, ethnicity, and she could not relate to me at all so i'm speaking from firsthand like i know that that how important that is that's why i love seeing seeing you all come up you know and um when i'm seeing i'm grabbing you like okay i gotta have you because we need to see more of this like yes we are out here doing this we're helping each other out and wow. we you know we can relate we have somebody that can relate to me so yes i love seeing that huge yeah yes people like it 
because I, I, I speak the language. That's right. I, I can go from eubonics to code switching and, you know, and everything. <laughs> so, Absolutely. I can relate Absolutely. to them all. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. Um, <laughs> I love it. It's important. It's important. Um, so are you noticing in the mental health part of it all, are you seeing more men or women? Well, it's always been more women. Uh, in, in order for me to get to the guys, one of the techniques I use is to go through their women. So you, okay. if, you want, if you want guys come to take, go through their women. Okay. Go through their girlfriends, their wives. That's the secret. You know, yes. That, yeah, because, you know, it's I have a few guys that have come to me straight up individually. But mm -hmm. um, for the most part, it's, it's usually I get a I get a referral. Say, hey, Lynn, I want you to talk to my brother, you know. Mm -hmm. I told him he was gonna call. You know, I, I'll, I'll pay for the session. Just, just please talk to my brother, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and he, he needs to talk to another black guy. I said, okay, mm -hmm. well that's cool. And mm -hmm. and I, I, it's like, but when these brothers open up, it's like, wow, it's just, just once they feel comfortable with you, boom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. That's awesome. Cause um, but I'm a mental health advocate all to my heart. I am like every Monday I'm trying to just put some things out, you know, um, on social media, you know, different tips and how to deal with certain things. And when I say I am an advocate for men, like, because I'm like, we need, we, yes. I, I'm like, it's okay not to have all the answers. Let's normalize men, you guys being human, you what, what, you know, and we need y'all. We need you to heal because we need y'all. We need y'all to heal and, you know, start loving on yourselves and all that. So that because we we need y'all. That's just the bottom line. I'm I'm big on that. That's that is my go to in in all of my coaching sessions. Mm -hmm. I ask the question, how do you love yourself? Mm -hmm. If I don't know how to love myself, I will make you take care of me. Mm -hmm. And I will take that into a relationship and if i take that into a relationship i'm going to try to make her take care of me i don't know i love myself so mm. it's important to learn how and if you don't then you're going to be somebody's burden <laughs> that's men mm. and women so so it's not not right. that's not exclusively mm -hmm. a men thing but uh 85 percent of black children don't grow up with father in the house right and and so if i never see a man love my mama then what is what what do i draw from when i when i go into a relationship tv my friends maybe family okay god mm -hmm. forbid the rap culture so you you don't want that as your role model so right. uh, yeah so that's that's devastating. I mean, it's, it's and it's just as devastating for the girl child. She needs to see a man love her mama so she can know what to expect. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And it's a lot. It's a lot of young people that have no, no idea. No. The things that I've seen, you know, just like uh, you know, like I'm like chivalry is a day. I mean, no, no opening of the door. Just the, the basics to me. That's just the basics. Opening doors opening car doors, you know. Yep. Um, yep. I've been out and this is what I see. Got to dinner. And it, and some of some of us older people are doing the same thing now. This is it. Yeah, well patriarchy is starting to die off. So, um you're going to see a shift in 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 the culture. Mhm. Mm so, it's starting I to shift my, now. Yeah, I, I saw my grandpa hold the door open. I'm like, okay. That, that no, I'm I'm a little guy, like six years mm -hmm. old. So I'm I'm rushing to pull the back then as a few deuce and a quarter. So I'm pulling all the <laughs> heavy. <laughs> I got it over. <laughs> yes, yes. So yeah, you do. That's that kind of like learn behavior, I guess. You what you see is uh what you do, right? 
Right. Yeah, I, I thank God for my grandfather. Um, he he was my male role model. That is who mm -hmm. I copied. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And me too. I, I'm thankful for mine too. Uh, <sighs> rest well with the ancestors. George Foster Sr. taught me how to ride a bike. I was his running buddy when I was sick. You know, he took care of me. So I had it. That's that was, you know, who I looked up to and that who uh, catered to my grandmother. Mm. Absolutely. So that's, you know, that's what I saw. But seeing my grandparents was one thing. I didn't really I didn't see that in my household. You know what I'm saying? So uh, it was a little different, mm -hmm. you know. Sure. And so. <sighs> Man, I'm trying to think because <laughs> it's so much I want to ask. Like, oh man, you gonna you might have to come back because the part of the relationships. Um, you when you're dealing with two two people who both come from dysfunction, because that's why they're there. They're there to see because they both come from dis two dysfunctional backgrounds, uh -huh. and they and they have this trauma, and now they're coming together. Trauma bonding, mm. Mm -hmm. right? Oh yeah, and trauma bonding and trauma triggers. Getting triggered, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, how do you how do, how would you? Where would you start with the, that couple? A couple like that. Well, I I do a lot of psychoeducation along with. I don't, I don't just want to fix them. I, I kind of want them to learn it for themselves so that they can apply it and they can keep it and pass it on to their kids. So when I get a lot of, when I get a highly conflictual couple, one, one of the things I'm, I'm looking at is age regression. So we get into this parallel escalation, right? We both go up at the same time. We hit the top of the cycle. We come right back down. We reset. You hit my trigger. I hit your trigger. And, and this is this is the pattern. They just they just go up. Uh, we don't communicate well, or we don't do this well, and you know. And so, what, your adult relationships will be the place where you discharge all of your childhood trauma. Mm -hmm. There's no other place to discharge that. You're not going to do it with family and friends. You're going to discharge it with somebody that that you're in a love relationship with. Mm -hmm. So. One of the things I try to do is to kind of get folks to settle down. I introduce them to the inner child. There, there's, there's Leonard, the, the, the adult, and then there's Leonard, there's little Lenny on the inside. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, when I ask you, how do you love yourself? That's what I'm really asking you. How do you know the person on the inside? So your inner child is the receptacle for all of your trauma, all of your pain. Uh, every bit of dysfunction that was in your family gets captured in this inner child. Mm -hmm. So as I move through my adult life, if my adult panics, anxiety, depression, what happens is I switch out of the adult and switch into the child. It's real fluid. You don't even notice you're doing it. Mm -hmm. But if you've ever heard yourself say, I can't believe I said that. I can't believe I did that. I can't. Oh, what am I thinking? What? I, I, I'm so sorry. Now, what I know is that when a child portion messes up, it does what children do. It runs off. And then the adult part of me has to come in and fix it. Mm. So when I come in as the adult, I'm like, I can't believe I said that. I can't believe I did that. That's true. Because I, I don't know who I am on the inside. Mm -hmm. So when I panic, my, my inner child is my defender. It's my fierce defender. Mm -hmm. Ready to you know, moments notice, like mm -hmm. don't let nobody get smart with you. Don't let nobody take advantage of you. Don't let nobody do this to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? So when I swap from my adult to my child self, I'm usually in some type of panic or, or I got triggered. So you got two people who are trying to get along and they're just constantly triggering each other, right? My tra I don't, I have, if I have unresolved trauma, the conflict is suggesting that there is something on the inside of me that's trying to get healed and it keeps coming up and it keeps, mm -hmm. coming, up, keeps coming up. 
it's going to keep coming up until you can address it. Absolutely. Yeah. So. <sighs> wow. That was a, a, I like that explanation. Very simplified. Yeah. Because what it's not the adults that are fighting, it's the 13 year old and 12 year old. That's mm -hmm. just doing the fighting. Because when they calm down, oh, baby, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And you are genuinely sorry. But now I'm back into my adult. So mm -hmm. I can say I'm sorry. But my child part, man, that ain't my child part, ain't apologizing to nobody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Right. So what, do, um, let me see, what do they call it when I, what is the phrase when they say like, like wherever your, wherever, like your, your, your growth, your uh, maturity level may have been stunted at a certain age. If something happened to you at oh, that yeah. certain age, yes. is there a phrase for that? Can you, or can yeah. you go? It's, it's, it was a, it was a group years ago called Arrested Development. Mm hmm Remember arrested development? That's, mm -hmm. that's what it means. So mm -hmm. I hit a stage of psychosocial development. And in order to, to, to move to the next stage, I've got to close out. I got to have closure to the stage. But if I, if I can't get any closure or I can't get any reconciliation here, I'll just stay here. Mm -hmm. My development is arrested. It's, it can't, this is as far as it can go mm -hmm. until mm -hmm. you see somebody who can who can kind of explain you know to remove that ceiling and so that you can go upwards? Yes. Okay. So you'd be like thirteen in 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 child years, but you could be fifty years old, 50, a fifty year old adult. I see it all the time. They look grown. They sound grown. They got beards and braids and you know. Mm -hmm. But when you listen, when you listen carefully. You'll you'll hear the child part. Mm -hmm. and you'll experience the child part if you're in a in a love relationship. Because if mm -hmm. I didn't get a lot of nurture growing up, I'll make you nurture me. Mm. So we must learn how to self nurture, self soothe, self soothe. I talk self pacify. Self -soothe. Right, because mm -hmm. the part that you're self soothing is the child part. Mm -hmm. It's like, ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, little boy, I got you. I got you. We we're gonna avoid this today. I know you wanna. I know you wanna jump in there, but I got you. Yes. The child part of you has to learn how to trust the adult part of you. So so what you see is what you get, and not a split. Who am I talking to today? Am I talking to the child or am I talking to the adult? Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. it's the change is fluid. You don't know that you're doing it. Mm -hmm. I see. So do you, um, would you say you dealt with more people that have been, have dealt with some type of molestation? Do you see that more than you see uh, maybe your, like your situation, parents uh, that are alcoholics, do you deal with that more? Uh, I see high levels of incest molestation rate in some cases. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's, it's, it was higher than I thought. Especially mm -hmm. in the black community. There are no secrets in the family. There's only a conspiracy of silence. Mm. That part. Mm. So there's nobody to talk about it. And so it just it's like a cancer. It just festers. Mm -hmm. And if I don't talk it out, when I have kids, my kids will act it out. Yes. I don't know where he got that from. Mm -hmm. I don't know where she got that from. Mm -hmm. She just crazy. Mm-hmm. I've been ain't, called crazy. Yeah, yeah. Ain't me. I don't know where they got that from. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Right. All right. right. Okay. I've been called crazy, so I know exactly what it is. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That old, that old, that old, um, what's that old term? Don't don't be telling what was what was what we grow up. Don't be telling nobody what's going on in this house. Don't tell nobody what's going on inside. Oh, this yeah. House. Right, that's taboo. What stays in this, what goes oh, on in this house, stays, stays in, this, in house. this house. That's the worst thing they could have ever said to us. Because I'm like, okay, what, well, what well, should nothing be going on in this house for me not to be telling? Right. Well, one of these children, if there are enough siblings, one of these kids will act out in school. Mm -hmm. 
that'll that'll draw social workers, that'll draw teachers, that'll draw attention to the family. So, and, and again, sometimes it's unconscious. I, I, I love my family, and, and and we need some help. And I, and my in my little mind, I know this ain't right, and so I got to get some help. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So. Mm. Oh my gosh. So it's like, it's like everything is all boiling down to that, that child inside, the child inside of you. I, I think a lot of it centers around that, it, especially when I, when I look at highly conflictual couples and mm. they do it in front of their kids. Like you do this in front of the kids. Mm. So I cannot parent out of my 12 year old child i can't parent my child from my child it's no. competitive right yeah or yeah. i'll make the child take care of me that's a whole nother show <laughs> wow, <laughs> I would yeah. make my child take care let's say so here's mom here's dad here's the line here's the sibling system dad leaves the system so <laughs> There's this, this vacuum that's created when he leaves the system. So one of these, these kids are activated. Usually it's the oldest boy to step into that role. Okay. And 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 now, you know, so you got an older brother and it, it can go one of three ways. It can be spousification. It can be parentification where I wind up taking care of my, my siblings. Or it can be adultification. I kind of grow up ahead of time. Mm -hmm. right? I, mm -hmm. I, I have conversations. I'm, I'm privy to conversations that adults have. Right. So it's really one of those three things. Mm. <laughs> I see you, Will. Because it's so much, it is so much that we want, you know, you look around in our community, you it's, it's like, why everything is just all over the place. This sure. is why, it's just so much. It's a lot. We have a lot of work to do. We have oh. a lot of work to do and a very little time to do it. Right. Because these kids are growing, I mean, these kids are growing up with, with you know, my father is half of who I am. So if my mom, I grow up and my mom, your daddy ain't whatever. He, he, he don't never pay this. He don't do that. Mm -hmm. You are killing half of who I am. I learned to hate that half. Especially if I carry my mom's feelings, I'm going to learn to hate that half of me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's not going to bode well if I go into a relationship and, and, and half of me, it's not even, half of me isn't there. You know, and I talk to guys, you know, I said, well, when was the last time you seen your father? Oh, uh, you know, he he's across town, but I don't talk to him. I don't want to talk to him. I don't want to see him. You know, I said, well, have you ever got his side of the story? Nah, my mom told me everything. OK. I encourage a lot of my male clients to, to go see your father, mm -hmm. get his side of the story. Mm -hmm. That's half of who you are. There's no denying that. You need to understand that half of you. Go find out his side of the story. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I know, I know once I uh, started working on healing my relationship with my dad, my life started to change. That was something that I had to do. I had to, because I didn't have, I didn't have his side. Of right. the story. My mother never talked bad about him. Never. But she didn't say anything. So I was left to kind of come up with my own conclusion, you know, mm -hmm. and he, he paid child support and everything. Yeah. But, you know, he wasn't there. He was not present. So she wasn't talking bad. He wasn't there. So I had to come up to my own conclusion. Like, well, I get, I don't, I guess he just, you know, yeah. don't want to be bothered. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Right. So what, what I internalize, you know, what my father, I, I if he, if, if, if whatever my mom say, I I'll, as a boy child, it's, it's, it's really, really dangerous to talk a whole bunch, a whole bunch of smack about my, my dad. 
Mm-hmm. You know, because I I'm going to internalize what you say. Right. Yeah. Right. And, and and the thing about it is, women cannot police the boundaries of masculinity with their boy child. There, mm-hmm. there comes a point. I mean, right around he's 11, 12 years old. He's about as strong as you are. When he hits 16, 17, he's four times stronger than you. He has a rat. Mm-hmm. And and then, you know, if there's no man to get in his chest to kind of calm him down, that's gonna right. be that's gonna be that's gonna be a problem right. for everybody. So. Right. And then speaking from from the young lady side, if he's not there for her, she's not going to know how to She's first, she's going to probably feel kind of, you know, not unworthy. You know, she's going to, she's because she's not going to have that masculine, that, that, um, it's like a masculine uh, feel. Um, oh, yeah. That's half of who you are. That's yeah. yeah. So you're out there when, when he's not there, you're out there trying to find him in different men, trying to find him because he's not there. That's what usually happens with girls, girls whose father's not there. Sure. Yeah. And, um, and that's that that's important. Like girls need their father kids need their father's period, point blank. And but you know, you were talking about the boys, so I kind of brought up the girls, like it's important for them too, because they need to know we come to a certain age, we start developing and having these emotions. We need that that masculine person in our lives to kind of help us direct that in a sense in a more constructive or positive way. You know what I'm saying? Kind of I think it balances. It balances her out. Sure, sure, absolutely. Yeah, you you need that balance. You 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 need both. This is both halves of who I am. Mm-hmm. So I like that. I like how you breaking that down. Saying these are two halves. You are two people. You are your mother and your father. Yep. No denying it. And and it's it's strange because we'll be attracted to people who remind us of the parent that gave us the hardest time. That's the theory. Mm-hmm. The the last five women I dated were cookie cutters of my mama. Same height, glasses, skin tone, hair, body shape. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Unconscious now, because your brain, your brain looks to fix everything that's in your life that went wrong. And I could be in a room of a hundred people. I will dial in on that one person. Mm-hmm. And you, you hear guys do it all the time. You hear girls do it too. Who is that? Who is that? Mm-hmm. You, you, ever hear, you hear how excited they are about who, mm-hmm. who, who is that? You know, right. That person lines up something about that person's frequency. I, my brain perceives that frequency look, it's usually the look. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and, and when I look at younger pictures of my mom, I go, yeah, yeah, that's, you know. that's right. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. you know, you could, it's like a cookie cutter. You just, you just, <laughs> just cut them out. You can line them all up. It's like, wow. Yeah. Right. Right. That is too funny. There's some, I know there's some, there's some major truth in that too. Cause my, um, my son, my oldest, he, his girlfriend right now, I'm a Leo. She's a Leo. I'm short. <laughs> She's short, you know? So and he thought, and I'm like, you know, I don't know what to tell you, son. <laughs> you thought you were running away from me. You ran right back into me. <laughs> well, you, you'll hear stuff like, I, I feel like I've known you all my life. You're so mm-hmm. familiar to me. Right. I'm so comfortable with you. <laughs> okay. Right, right. <laughs> that makes sense. It makes sense. It makes sense. Absolutely. Wow. So it's like at the end of the day, you, there's no need to trying to turn off the parent, the, the, the two halves. You got to understand it. And if you need to rewrite one half of that, then that's okay. Mm-hmm. I had to rewrite my father half because mm-hmm. I did not want that relationship with my daughter. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I rewrote that half of me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Got I closure like to 
the relationship I should have had from my father got mm -hmm. into closure. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Uh I this could go on for another hour. I mean, or two or three. I mean, really. So we so we so we really just kind of tapped on a little bit about relationships and the inner child. We'll say that was our discussion for this evening. Mm -hmm. Because you're gonna have to come back. So okay. All right. uh, <laughs> really, I know. I know. It's I just know. so much, but I um, I'm um, I'm thankful for you that you know that you're out here. You can you're in these trenches, you know. Uh, trying. Well, I'm not gonna say trying, but helping and making the difference. You care, you know. So that's important. To seeing you, a black man, melanated man, that cares. You know, they exist. People, this is this is the real world. This is not social media. You know, this is not TV. This is the real world. People are really out here again. I say, doing some amazing things. And um, so, I, I feel like sometimes you get unnoticed. The most important people. Yeah. Well, there's a. I. You know, the, when you look at media coverage of black males on TV, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's not it's not all positive imagery right you know so mm -hmm. so and, and and people you know and i got clients who said i was looking for i wanted a black man and because the the, the world of therapy counseling is dominated by women it's way more women than men mm -hmm. mm -hmm. the, the whole field is just dominated by women so pe people look for you know I, I wanted a black male and 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 you came highly recommended. I'm like, okay, well, cool. That's great. How can mm -hmm. I serve you? So, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, we out there. We out there. They they are. They are. I love it. I love it. And I want to definitely thank the um, Shanti Alexandra Foundation for um, you were on her show, and I, I'm actually uh, secretary on on that um, organization. So, I'm happy that I was able, you know, to. Get you know, get you learn about you through her, um, Shantavia. So okay. I'm thankful for that. Yes, and um, like I said, it's going on forever. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to wrap it all up. It, it's almost it's been 45 minutes almost. So I um I have enjoyed this time uh, that we shared, and you're definitely gonna have to come back. Sure, sure. Yeah, oh, here we go. It, this is why I do two hour sessions see mm -hmm. yeah because that hour will go by fast that yes. hour will go, it blows by it and I, I i haven't figured out yet you you just cannot get any and you got three people trying to talk in, in a, a clinical hour is 50 minutes you've got three people trying to talk about something that's really deep tears are flying and and you know and oh i'm sorry i gotta let you go right yeah. I never do that. Yeah. Never. All right, people. Y'all heard that two two hour sessions. <laughs> two need, hours. You yes. need two hours. Like getting a two hour massage. You can't go back to an hour. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. 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 Wow. Wow. Okay, Lynn. Well, thank you so much sure for thing. And um, before you go, could you just give us maybe um First, give us a nugget, you know, maybe a word of encouragement, some advice, mm -hmm. a quote, whatever you want to say, and then let us know how we can contact you. Okay. Uh, loving yourself, there's, there's, I'll, I'll, there's a whole bunch of pills. Three of the main pillars of loving yourself is your ability to say no. When you have the ability to say no, you have the ability to establish a boundary. Boundaries let people know how you want to be treated. And then the third one is, uh, okay, let's see, boundaries. Oh, putting myself first. I have to put myself first. I, I'll do everything for everybody else. I won't, I won't do stuff for myself. So when I start to actually love myself, I'll say no. I'll have boundaries, and I will put myself first. Now, I'm a, now I can be available to you. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love that. I love it, love it, love it. <sighs> it's been an amazing time. 
Um, before we go, I would first like to say thank you again, Lynn Sertivant, for joining me on Snails with No Shells. And um, um, people in the audience, please like, share, and subscribe. Like, share, and subscribe. Let's let's get the word out. Um, the more you like and share, and the more people can find out, you know, what's going on, what we got going on here. I and mean, you can meet these amazing people that I have on my platform. They're out here. They're getting it in. So like, share, and subscribe. This I'm on YouTube. Ms. BJ Martin, Facebook, BJ Martin, Instagram, MS underscore BJ Martin. So, I mean, we're everywhere. And this is going to be on um, audio too. Uh, Spotify, Apple. We are, yeah, we're digital. Oh, wow. we're yes, we are. Out here. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, because we, we have to. This is important. This is so important to me to spotlight, um, you know, good people that are doing some good things in the community. I talk about um, uh, closet entrepreneurs. Like, you know, I'm like, you're, you're making the best burger in town and your neighbor don't even know. It's time to come out the closet. Let them, <laughs> you know, let them know what's going on. It's time. It is time. It's 2020. It's time. Let's it's time. go. Let's it's go. time. And, yes. and, and while white people are trying to hold on to power, privilege, and population, they got enough distractions for them right now. Now's our time for us to coalesce and, yes. and, and do and do the thing that's going to make us be a solid community. So, yes, yeah, we have to come together. We gotta have we gotta have a team. You need a team out here. We can't mm -hmm. be out here by ourselves. The inner work that's done, but yes, alone. You have you that that's some the self work, learning how to love yourself. But yeah, but you let's work on that and then we can come together, like you said, and be solid and be there for each other like we need to be. Absolutely. Yes. All right. I'm going to say this one more time. <laughs> I enjoyed the time we shared. Thank you so much again. We appreciate you. Sure thing. And before we go, I would just like to say my words are, remember, just like the sun, you are necessary. Peace.